Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm glad to meet you all again through this online medium. So today the topic that we have chosen to meditate upon is transforming the oppressive structures. Transforming the oppressive structures for which we are going to meditate based on the gospel according to Luke chapter 13 verses 10 to 17. So in this society when we see about the structures the family makes the basic part of the structure in this society so being a family that is the basic unit of the society which also is part of the structures that is around us that are formed to benefit the people in their day-to-day -day lives so when a structure is formed its main intention for this structure is to benefit all in equality there should be no distinctions there should be no discriminations in the structure but then again because of few individuals because of few corrupt intentions people have been led astray and to fall behind the authority to continue and to follow the oppressive structures that have been created for the benefit of few people so when we see this oppressive structures when we read this uh, gospel passage of luke chapter 13 uh, verses 10 to 17 we see how christ is standing against this oppressive structure that was uh, that was put in front so it was an indicator of how the society needs to be transformed and it needs to be restored especially the structure that is around us for 18 years this lady who has been in the been suffering was not given much of an importance in this structure so what is happening is that because of the selfish intentions they want to observe the structures and the rules of the structure in such a way that an individual person's well-being is being sidelined or ignored so this is what christ has shown us through this uh, situation that is happening there it is for this very reason jesus was sent into and placed within this structure so jesus was born on this earth as son of god to restore it and to transform it when christ acted in this situation he was pursuing to transform this society so God's mission here threatened and shook the structure that is there and therefore the structure tried its level best to remove the disturbance that it is facing so which eventually we all know it ended up in the cross so when we analyze the beginning part of the gospel text that we have it calls us to renew ourselves renew ourselves from within and to act upon it luke chapter 13 clearly warns of the consequences of disobeying this call to transform so following this we see the consequence of the fruitlessness of the fig tree and the tree that is known by its fruit so with these highlights i want to bring out three things for your for you to meditate upon the first thing that we need to see is disorder the disorder that is in the structure is need to be uh, which are need to be identified which are not only need to be identified it needs to be observed and identified so that it can be overcome here we see that jesus was attending uh, the worship in a synagogue and it was on a sabbath and in that on that day he observes this woman and this woman was affected by satan for 18 years and she was struggling with her hunchback she was hunchback or crippled because of her inability to do the normal chores every day has become a challenge for her and yet even though her physical body was a limitation her heart was not contained by this limitation her heart was filled by god 
filled by the faith she has that her God could do anything for her. And when we see that, the struggles because of her hunchback, she could not look up to anyone straight. And every day, every day-to-day -day task is a challenge for her. She, uh, she patiently waited for 18 years to put up with these challenges. With all this suffering, Jesus saw her. Jesus observed her and called her to him. Jesus saw her willingness to participate in this worship in spite of her difficulties. She came to God with no one in the society wanted her. Like Abraham, her faith was identified. Her faith was honored. Like Abraham, her faith to believe that God was able to do impossible things was identified by Christ, which we see in verse uh, 18 of chapter 13. This same element we can see that in Romans chapter 4 verses 19 to 25. So Satan was in the synagogue and he wanted to expose this evilness that is within the structure and he wanted to defeat that. But he also wanted this woman to help him teach the people about the important lesson of freedom. So not only does Satan bow people down, not only Satan cripple people down, but also our sinfulness, our sorrow and our suffering. Our sin brings us down, which we can see it in Psalm 38 verse 6. And our sorrow will bring us down, which we see in Psalm 42 5. And our suffering will bring us down, which we see in Psalm 44 25. The second thing that I want you to ponder upon is the distinction. Identifying what is wrong within the system. First we need to observe, then we need to identify. When we read verses 12 and 13, we can see Jesus not just he saw her, but he observed her suffering, her willingness to attend the worship in time. Definitely she was faithful in everything that she was doing. That was reflected in her uh, attendance at the, at the synagogue. Often we are so much given with comfort and so much we are kept in, a, uh, kept in a comfortable zone. Yet on a Sunday morning, we see a lot of people coming to church after half of the service is over. Are they, only are they only coming to church to receive half of the blessing? Are they only coming to church for uh, attendance sake? Are they only to come to church for, for just a casual meet with one another? What is the purpose of coming to church? You are coming to worship God. You are coming to honor God. You are coming to glorify God. You are coming to soak yourself with the word of God. But how can you come late to a church gathering? How can you come to church late to worship God? When we see that Jesus saw her devotion and revealed God's desire to her in front of everyone. They did not care for each other. They did not help one another. Jesus' calling was an unexpected one in the synagogue. He called her affectionately and blessed her with the freedom from the bondage. But for the society, she was just an object of mockery and a joke. Jesus' calling was not just filled with affection, but also filled with authority and power. His voice is of comforting and supporting. In it was the essence of his mission, importance of an individual over a structure or a system. By calling her, Jesus expressed the importance everyone should have in a structure and gave it to her. So after all, she had been bound for 18 painful years and one more day could have been a much, couldn't have been made much more of a difference. But then he chose deliberately on a Sabbath day 
in front of those people, in front of those oppressive structures, in front of those who oppress her, in front of those people who have mocked her. He wanted to teach a lesson about freedom. Third thing that we need to ponder upon is participation. First thing we need to identify the disorder, then we need to observe, then we need to participate in transformation. That woman who was called and got her freedom from bondage, it was a complete freedom. There was no compromise in that freedom. It was a complete freedom. It was a freedom from the evil forces that bound her. Jesus defended the women and rebuked the ruler or authority in that synagogue. Jesus reminded him that he treated the animals far better than these poor people who are suffering. He accused uh, those people, not only those in authority, but the entire congregation for blindly following the, uh, the evil authority over there. Jesus was, Jesus was arguing from the lesser to the greater. If God permits people to help the thirsty animal on the Sabbath, why don't God help the uh, poor and needy people on the Sabbath who were created in the image of God? Any tradition that keeps us from helping others is not at all from God. Any tradition that keeps us from helping the people or helping anyone is not from God. In fact, it is easy to use a tradition as an excuse for not caring for others. There were people in the congregation who helped to use the Sabbath violation to accuse Jesus. But he left them ashamed and that they had nothing to say. The lesson that he taught was clear. Satan puts people into bondage, but true freedom comes from trusting Christ. The Sabbath that God wants, wants us to have is a, a rest that will give us, it will give us or uh, replenish us or to revive us or the rest that will rejuvenate us. Work for the uh, six days of the week and take a break. Take a break. Revive yourself. Make use of the time to time to revive yourself. That was the intention. The rest that comes from comes through his grace and not from obeying traditions, which we see in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Jesus pointed out that a person is much more important than an animal than any tradition, than whatever it may be. A person is more important. A person's importance in the structure is even more important. His enemies saw nothing wrong in helping their animals on the Sabbath, which we see in uh, verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 5 as well. The total hypocrisy and the foolishness of this thinking of the religious leaders were obvious. As a result, Jesus' opponents were humiliated and the crowds were delighted. Today, often consciously and subconsciously, we fall victim of these structural forces around us, often leading astray by wrong ideals and intentions. As times that at times, what this society sees as a right is not even close of being right in the sight of God. It does not lead to constructive, complete, healthy and peaceful society. In Mark chapter 2 verses 27 to 28, we read, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Many of the structures that are around us, which have been created with good intention, there is nothing wrong in that. But then, the authority in those structure have been selfish in misleading the people, in leading the people astray to benefit certain vested interests. Only benefiting a selective few, we are called to transform these structures. How we transform? You can't transform a structure from outside. You have to transform a structure from within. You have to transform the structure by closely observing it. How Jesus transformed the structure through this lady. How 
Jesus closely observed this woman and transformed her life. This transformation has to start from within ourselves. We need to closely observe. We need to identify the disorder and act against this disorder and bring God's order in it. This transformation has to start from within ourselves. As I have said, like this woman, her faith that she had within, the faith that is in her and the commitment within her led to her external transformation. Her spiritual stronghold led to this transformation of her physical body. Our lives need to be a catalyst of change in this society. A catalyst of change within the structure. A true witness of God. We are called to transform the oppressive structures. The structures that are, that are putting us into a bondage. The structures that are ignoring the pleas and cries of the poor. The structures that are ignoring the suffering of the people. The structures that are ignoring the God's call. We need to overcome those challenges. With the help of God, we can change. We can bring the changes in the structure. That is the calling that Jesus is keeping in front of us. May God bless these words. Have a good day. God bless you.